several requests for an easy introduction to just what series and parallel electrical circuits are and what the differences are. Some of the questions from recent posts have included things like what is the difference between series and parallel? Can lights be put in series? Do longer cables make a difference? And one request, please make it easy, I'm a beginner. The two main formulas we will use are Ohm's Law and Power Law. Learn how to use these and you're off to a good start. They are shown here in the popular triangle form and below each are the three permutations of formula for each triangle. First of all, what is the difference between series and parallel? Most people associate this with resistors, but in fact, both series and parallel crops up in many places in electrics, as we shall see. In a series circuit, all the components are in line with each other. The total current that goes in passes through every component before it comes out. In a parallel circuit, the components are not in line with each other, they are next to each other. The current that goes in can take several routes and in different amounts of current. It then all rejoins and comes out again. In both circuits, what goes in comes out. It's what happens in between that defines the difference. Both circuits as shown here have a current flow of 7 amps, but they are different. In series, the same amount of current flows through all the devices or components one after the other. The total current is the same as any individual current, 7 amps through every component. In parallel circuits, each individual component will have its own individual current, which can be different from some or all of the others. The total current for the circuit is the sum of all the individual currents, in this case 2 amps plus 1 amp plus 4 amps, making the total current 7 amps. We can look in more detail at series circuits now. If we begin with a single resistor, as shown, what is the current, or I? Looking at Ohm's law, we can see that the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So 10 volts divided by 5 ohms is 2 amps. So what will the current be for two 5 ohm resistors? Two 5 ohm resistors in series is 5 plus 5 or 10 ohms. Let's go back to Ohm's law again. The current is volts divided by ohms, so we have 10 volts divided by 10 ohms, which gives us 1 amp. The voltage has stayed the same, but we've increased the resistance, so we get a decrease in current. So what has happened for there to be less current? Let's look at what the voltage is across each individual resistor. Remember, the value of each resistance cannot change. A 5 ohm resistor will always be a 5 ohm resistor. And the current is a result of the voltage and resistance. The current has no influence over the other values. If current changes, it is because something else has changed. From Ohm's law, we see that voltage across any resistor is the current multiplied by the resistance. So 1 amp multiplied by 5 ohms is 5 volts. Now, we have just 5 volts across an individual resistor, and 5 volts divided by 5 ohms is just 1 amp. By putting the resistors in series, we have halved the voltage drop across each resistor, even though the supply voltage remains at 10 volts. And this is an important concept to remember. Extending cables is the same as putting resistors in series. The total resistance will increase. Copper cable will have its own very small resistance. And here we've joined two 0.4 cables together with the result that the overall cable resistance is now 0.8 ohms. The longer the supply cable to an appliance, a cooker for example, the more volts lost in the cable, resulting in less volts at the cooker. Less volts at the cooker means it takes longer to boil a pan of water, perhaps only seconds, 
but somebody has to pay for that extra electric. Each time we plug in an extension lead, we're making the circuit cables longer and increasing the cable resistance. Longer cables mean less voltage at the equipment. This often makes little noticeable difference to the equipment, but just be aware of it. I've worked in some offices where there have been five or six extension leads all plugged into each other in series. Let's take a simple 240 volt electric kettle rated at 3 kilowatts. It's only 3 kilowatts at 240 volts. If we change the voltage, then the wattage changes. So how does this affect the performance of the kettle? Here we have our 3 kilowatt kettle, which we said is only 3 kilowatts with a 240 volt supply. Imagine that there is no available socket at the coffee making table, so somebody has run a series of extension leads to it. Problem solved. The kettle works, and that's all that matters. But the kettle might now be rated at 2.5 kilowatts, because the voltage at the end of the extension leads is only 220 volts. Reduce the voltage, reduce the wattage at the point of use, and the kettle takes longer to boil the water. In our example, if it took two minutes to boil a full kettle of water at 240 volts, it could take almost two and a half minutes to boil the same volume of water at the end of the extension leads. Many people will not realise that voltage drop is the voltage lost in the cable. The points of use will have less voltage available to power appliances and they will happily do a DIY job and loop a long cable to the shed at the bottom of the garden. The longer the cable, the greater the voltage drop. In this crude example, perhaps a 50 meter elongation, the voltage drop of say 11 volts is just on the limit of acceptance. The DIY chap now moves his shed a further 50 meters away. The electrical cable is extended and the voltage drop increases and could now be 22 volts, well outside the acceptable range. The 230 volt supply may now be not much more than 200 volts. The lights might be dim, the kettle takes longer to boil, and cables may become warm. What he's done is added more cable, which is more resistant, which means more voltage drop across the cables. Now we can consider parallel circuits and look at the differences. Let's return to our single 5 ohm resistor example across a 10 volt supply. You will remember that we calculated 10 volts divided by 5 ohms and we had 2 amps of current. If we put two 5 ohm resistors in parallel this time, that is, side by side, each resistor will have 2 amps flowing through it. What is the effective resistance of these two parallel resistors? In other words, what single resistor value can replace the two resistors in parallel? We know that each resistor has a current flow of 2 amps, so 2 resistors in parallel is 2 plus 2, which is 4 amps. From Ohm's law, we know the voltage divided by current is ohms, so 10 volts divided by 4 amps gives us an effective resistance of 2.5 ohms. In this example, two 5 ohm resistors in parallel could be replaced by just one resistor of 2.5 ohms. What if we had different value resistances in parallel? Let's have an example. A 6 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor in parallel across a 24 volt supply. If we do our calculations correctly, the bigger resistor value should have the lower current flow. Let's look. I equals V over R and 24 volts divided by 6 ohms is 4 amps and 24 volts divided by 12 ohms is 2 amps. That looks about right. The 6 ohm resistor is carrying twice the current of the bigger 12 ohm resistor. The total current is therefore 4 plus 2, which is 6 amps. Now calculate the effective resistance. What single resistor value can replace the two resistors in parallel? What single resistor will conduct 6 amps of current with a 24 volt supply? Back to Ohm's law and resistance is voltage divided by current. R 
equals V over I. 24 volts divided by 6 amps is 4 ohms. This time, the effective resistance of the two resistors is 4 ohms. These two resistors in parallel could be replaced by one resistor of 4 ohms. How do these parallel circuits relate to real life circuits and the power or watts that we are used to using? Appliances and lamps come in different power ratings, watts or kilowatts, often stated on the rating plate or label for the equipment. But fuses and circuit breakers come in amps, so how do we find the amps value for the right fuse? This time we will use power law, a simple formula similar to Ohm's law. For us, power and watts are the same thing, it just depends on what you want to call it. Lighting is a parallel circuit. Each lamp is connected across the AC supply, which we will call 240 volts in these examples. All the lamps are in parallel with each other. The total current used depends on the number of lamps switched on and the wattage of the lamps. Calculating amps from watts is easy. If we have a 100 watt lamp, 100 watts divided by 240 volts is 0 0.42 amps rounded up. For a 60 watt lamp, this is 60 watts divided by 240 volts for an answer of 0 0.25 amps. A lower wattage, less current. The 3 kilowatt kettle is 3000 watts divided by 240 volts, which means we need a 13 amp fuse in the plug. With his two companion lamps turned off, this single 100 watt lamp draws 0 0.42 amps and the total circuit current is also 0 0.42 amps. With two 100 watt lamps switched on, each lamp draws 0 0.42 amps. But the total circuit current is now 2 times 0 0.42 amps, which is 0 0.84 amps. Two lamps, twice the current. Now we turn off both 100 watt lamps and just turn on the 60 watt lamp. With just this one 60 watt lamp switched on, the power consumption is 0 0.25 amps. And this is true of all electrical accessories and appliances in parallel. More equipment turned on, more electricity is used. With less turned on or lower wattage appliances, electricity consumption falls. What would happen if Instead of parallel lighting circuits, we install the lamps in series. And this does happen. And then you get a desperate phone call from a householder who is trying to do his own wiring. We can begin with just one lamp. Power divided by voltage will give us the amps. So 100 watts divided by 240 volts is 0 0.42 amps, which we've already calculated. Now. Calculate the resistance or impedance of the lamp, since this is now an AC supply. 240 volts divided by 0 0.42 amps is 571 ohms. The 100 watt lamp will have an impedance of about 571 ohms. Now add another lamp in series with the first. Our total impedance is 1142 ohms. Calculate the current, 240 volts divided by 1142 ohms is 0 0.21 amps of current flow. Same supply voltage, twice the resistance gives half the current in the circuit. Now we should calculate the power or effective wattage of each lamp. The current through the lamp is 0 0.21 amps. The resistance of just one lamp is 571 ohms. What is the voltage across the lamp? We know that the voltage equals current multiplied by ohms. So 0 0.21 amps multiplied by 571 ohms is 120 volts. That is the voltage across each lamp, 120 volts. Now calculate the power in each lamp. Voltage multiplied by current will give the power in watts. So 120 volts multiplied by 0 0.21 amps is 25 watts. Comparing this answer 
to the single lamp example, and by putting the lamps in series, we've halved the voltage across the lamp from 240 volts to 120 volts, and also halved the current from 0.42 amps to 0.21 amps. Half a half is a quarter, so the effective wattage is just one quarter of 100 watts, which is 25 watts. You won't use much electricity, but you won't be able to see much either. Let's keep the same circuit, but calculate the lamp output for the two lamps together. If our calculations are correct, we should have a total output of 2 times 25 watts, or 50 watts. V times I equals P. So, 240 volts times 0 0.21 amps is 50 watts. One lamp is 25 watts, and two lamps is 50 watts. In series, the light output is less than the light output of the lamps in parallel. Do learn how to use Ohm's law and the power law. In series circuits, the components form a daisy chain. The resistance of the circuit will increase and the current flowing will decrease. Longer circuit cables or excessive use of extension cables will reduce the voltage available at the equipment. Circuit lengths are best kept to the shortest practical length. In a parallel circuit, the components are side by side. Each component will conduct its own current. The current will increase and the effective resistance will decrease. Lighting circuits should be installed in parallel. A series lighting installation will result in a circuit with a diminished output, less watts of lighting power. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.